Now, everybody doesn't have thousands of dollars to spend. Some people just have enough to get the pet, and then when they get home, or when they're at the store, they're second guessing everything. So let me tell you about some ways that you can plan out the housing for your animal. Hey guys, how's it going? This is P Mac with Spirit Reptiles again, and today I'm just coming to talk to you about housing for your snake, in particular ball pythons, since that's what we specialize in, and there's a lot more of those on the market than anything else. Um, first of all, we will start from a least expensive option, we'll go to a middle, and we'll go to a more expensive PVC option. And of course, these can come in a lot of different sizes and things, but I'll discuss some of the reasons why we do this. So the first one that I want to start with is the 15 quart tub. And with the 15 quart tub, we got this one from Target. You can get it from Lowe's or you can get it from Home Depot. For 15 quarts, we drilled air holes around the sides. Um, this is one that we use for when we're treating our animals for mites. When we get them from a new vendor or a show or we pick one up at a pet store. Um, whenever we add something to our collection, we like to use these tubs because they're sanitary and it allows breathing. So this is about anywhere from eight to ten dollars. It comes with a lid that snaps on. You can see. And it snaps on and off. The snakes can't escape. Um, the second thing that we I'm choosing for this setup would be a PVC pipe. And this is a, a four inch pipe that we got from Lowe's. It was about three dollars and we got it from the sprinklers uh, what is it called sprinkler plumbing. Um, it's the thin walled one and it runs about three dollars and we ordered 50 deli cups off of Amazon, probably about 27 to 28 cents a piece. So what that allows you to do is you can put that in there with water um, and it's wide enough in this container to where the snake can't turn it over. That's the one thing I like about this. It doesn't matter the snake, doesn't matter the size of the snake, but traditionally in a 15 quart enclosure, what you would like to do is you would like to keep a snake from hatchling to about 300 grams. So that's kind of putting in the ballpark figure so that when you want to have this set up, before you go and pick up your animal, that you know exactly what type of animal, the size that you can get. And then it gives you some room to grow into it. The next thing that I want to cover is short of the enclosure and the water dish is a substrate. For this one, I like to use paper. So I'm just, I have white butcher paper that I kind of cut some kind of, some kind of I guess, straight for me. I'm in Texas. Um, so what I did is I folded it over, I put it inside, I can put the water disc on the side with the folded paper. You can cut that as well. And then I also have this Exoterra hide. I know that you've seen this a lot of the times at pet stores, Pla hard plastic hide. And I put that inside so that the snake has a place to hide. That's probably the most important thing about ball pythons, regardless of the enclosure. So I'll continue to stress that. But how will we heat it? Um, we will use this under tank heater. And you can get these in a lot of different ways. You can order a small one from Reptile Basics that already has a plug attached. You can go to Petco, PetSmart, Walmart, um, your local reptile store, and order these just basic heat, under tank heat, heat, uh, heat strips. And so what you wanna do is you wanna take this heat strip and put it under the side with the high. Um, Set that on a high temperature or a medium temperature, and then get one of these BN Link um, thermostat or regulators for your heat. And then what, what we do is we set it at 89 degrees. And you see right now, this is at 84, I just plugged it up. But what this will do is it will, it will allow you to have this under tank heater in there without cooking your snake. You don't want to cook snake because you didn't buy a pet to eat. So, um, the good thing about this, let me let you know the ranges. So ball pythons, or most snakes, can be kept anywhere from 88 to 92 degrees. So you will read it on here, but the most important temperature to read is with your heat gun, which costs about 20 to 25 dollars from Amazon, and it's, they make a lot of different kinds. And you just measure the temperature there, and so you can see right there, this is measuring at 87 degrees. So that's right in line. And if I were to let that keep heating up, then you would see that it would be a little bit below the, the temperature of this once it got fully set. Um, so, hey guys, that's the least expensive option. We got this, the under tank heater, the water disc in there, and all you need now is a snake. So you can put this somewhere, 
that's not flammable when you put the under tank heater on there and you'll be good to go. All right, let me discuss the other option. All right guys, so now we'll go on to the medium option. So this is the option that I had when I was in college. This was the option. I mean, I'm talking about in the mid to late nineties, just to let you know. So Brian was around Bartek and I really do feel sorry for everything he's going through. Hey man, we're praying and pulling for you. Uh, but he was around to ask questions for and Bob Clark was it. I mean, that's all I remember was Bob Clark and this was it. A standard, you know, like I guess 25 to 30 long aquarium, maybe a 20 gallon aquarium long with a heavy duty screen lid. You'd want to get clips to clip this in. I mean, I'm talking back in the day, but this works guys. But so what we would want to do with this is instead of me using substrate on this, I'm going to just show you what I use in college that I never had an animal not be healthy or fail or not eat. So, and even with ball pythons. So what I've done is I've gone to Lowe's and I bought a whole sheet. I mean, it's like a room size eight by four sheet of this AstroTurf. And I cut it up in the dimensions of this tank and you can see how it fits in there. I mean, it looks like grass. I mean, it feels like grass, you know, I mean, it's AstroTurf, right? So. The, the major reason I would use this is because I would want to have strips of this so that when it's soiled, I can take it out and I can put one right back in. And then in the meantime, I can take the one that's in here and soak it in bleach. And then I can rinse it out in water. But that's how we used to do it. And that way it still works, guys. I mean, it still does. As long as you rinse it like three or four times to where you can rinse all the bleach out, you're going to be great. But again, guys, you want to still go with the, the hide, and I'm just transferring this hide over. You could use a lot of things. Like you could go to Walmart and buy a, one of those Rubbermaid, the black solid ones and cut a, cut a hole in it, just like the ones they sell on Amazon. And I mean, we use those sometimes, sometimes we don't, but for purposes of this video, we use this right here. And then I'll take, uh, in this one, I'll use a plastic water disc because it's visible. And so if you got a girl, you get pink. If you got a boy, you get blue or whatever. You know, I don't know what you want to do. So then we get this uh, hard plastic. Uh, this is a Barky, Barky Bowls. They used to sell them at Target, but they discontinued them. So I just went and bought a whole bunch of them, right? So I'm gonna put this on the cool side, right? And now I got the lid on. I would have had the clips in there. The clips are sold everywhere. And for this one, I would use a little bit bigger uh, under tank heater. And this one I got on Amazon for about 20 bucks. It has a temperature regulator right here, which means nothing because I don't want to cook my snake. So what you want to do is you want to lift this up and stick it under your hot side. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I got it under the hot side. I would take this and plug it into my thermostat and still set it at 89 to 90 degrees. So I have this one set at 89 still, but if I wanted to increase it, all I would have to do is hold that while it's flashing, push up one, two, and set it at 91 degrees. So now you can see it's set at 91 degrees. If I had that plugged up in there, it'd be good to go. And that's pretty much, this is the setup guys. Now you can put other decoration in there and things like that, but as far as the snake, the major thing that you would have to do to increase their security is to put that black aquarium backing around all of the back edges, right? So if you did that, then your snake wouldn't be able to see outside. So a lot of the times people say, oh, my ball python is not eating. All you have to do is if you cover this up, put a hide in there over the heat and just let your ball python acclimate before you go to handling it, it would do well in this tank. And a tank of this size will last your ball python until they're about sub adult size. So right at about a thousand grams. And at a thousand grams, you would have to move to another option. But again, guys, remember this is a video on you know, hey, everybody doesn't have thousands of dollars. Some people just got a couple hundred. So if you got a couple hundred and you want a snake, well, you should be able to get one because that's the joy of reptile running. And this, this will be perfectly functional. Just remember to cut these into strips so that you can remove it when it's soiled. And uh, hey guys, now I'll move to the more expensive option and we'll see how that goes. Hey guys, one thing I failed to mention that uh, Lynn pointed out, you know, thank God for Lynn, man, is, uh, <laughs> She said, you know, one of, where we got this from was the remnant section. So you always want to check the remnant section of Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever you go for this actual turf because I think we were able to get some, like an eight by four foot roll of this for 
like right at around, I guess $15, $12 or something like that, because there's no need to spend money when you don't have to. So again, thank you, Lamp, for pointing it out, and I hope this helps you guys, all right? All right, guys, so even, so there's a lot of controversy. I wanna start that out. There's a lot of controversy over the size of enclosure you need for your ball python. So when you buy a hatchling or anything that's sort of sub-adult, you know, a lot of times people say, hey, you gotta have a, a four by two by two for a ball python. Well, if you did that, that's gonna scare the crap out of your ball python because it's too much room for your ball python. So your ball python probably won't eat. They'll stay in their hides all day. And you'll be thinking, hey, what's wrong with my snake? What's wrong? There's nothing wrong with the snake. There's something wrong with you, straight up. Because snakes, such as ball pythons, live in such tight areas. I mean, they live in burrows, termite mounds. All you got to do is study their geography that they live in in West Africa. And if you study where they're from, it gives you a great idea as to what to build to suit them. So in this case, I got this is a 10 gallon PVC. It has a plexiglass front with a, a lock on it. Uh, we bought this at a reptile show so you can see. And I have a ceramic heat emitter on top that is plugged in to, I'll just go ahead and plug it back in. That's plugged into our BN Link thermostat control. And I have it set at 91, but because it's so close and I got a 150 watt ceramic heat emitting bulb in there, what I would do is I would hold this down so now you see it's flashing, and I'll go ahead and reset it back to 89 degrees. Um, that's important, guys. I mean, because you, you can imagine if this is a 10-gallon aquarium and you had to, it set up to 100 degrees, well, the heat would spread too far. So, and that's not what we want to do. So that's the best way to control it. And I can use either this heat gun, or if you look way in the back, there is a actual thermometer in there. So I got a thermometer in there so that you can actually see the temperature. And I got, so I got three forms of control for the snake that I have. I have my digital um, thermostat, I have my heat gun, and I have my, my uh, th uh, temperature control in there. So I can see a lot of temperatures to make sure that my snake is in a good environment. Um, for this setup, I chose to go with these coconut husk. And I chose to go with those because for one, it's if they poop in it, I can see it, I can pick it up, I can move it to the side, I can clean it. And what I can do with that is, I got my water bottle and I can mist it down to increase the humidity. So I've misted it down and I'll go back to my PVC or you can use a hard plastic, or you can use a, uh, hold on, or you can use a cat bowl. It seems like they really like these bowls because you're thinking about security. A lot of the times that snake will crawl up under here and crawl under that bowl. So when they want to hide and still get cool, they can do that. But for the purposes of this video, I will go back to my water dish. That is the uh, deli cup and the four inch PVC tube. So what I would do is I would put that in there. So it's sitting in there. And what I also want to do is hold on one second. I want to get my hide again, my exoterra hide. Of course you can use any hide, but I just want something that is, has a little bit of a rough edge because it's in there. The coconut husk will help with the shedding and things. And I will put this in here. And I, would, I went to my local reptile store and I bought this driftwood. And I kind of treated it for mites before I uh, put it in and then just let it sun dry so that I can make sure that it was still well. And so what I'll do is I'll put this in here. And so the total cost, you know, so we'll just add this up. So we'll say 30, 20, so that's 50, about 110 for the cage, so that's 160. Uh, this PVC with the deli cups, we'll just say that that's about four, so what would that be, 155? This if we're just rounding up. This piece of driftwood, we can say that's 10, so 165. This exoterra hide would cost you about, I'm guessing about $10, so 175. And then you'd have to buy a big, so coconut husk. 
So coconut husk can come in a small container or the big cube. We chose to get the big cube, so that was about $25. So that's about $200 for the setup. Um, not including, you know, if you didn't have this, there would be an extra $20 or whatnot. So about $220 for this container. So for a snake that is... I put I put her I took her out of her house and I mean she's been really good but for this Wookie female which we'll eat later so for this Wookie female this is a perfect size enclosure guys because it's dark it's it's humid it has a lot of little nooks and crannies for her to hide in um, there's a place where she can just totally get away and I'm not gonna mess with her all the time but she's in this for a reason. So that I can get her acclimated, I can get her feeding. So with all of this going on, she's never missed a meal, guys. Never missed a meal. And when we got her from the ball python shed, um, she was one of our NARBC and Arlington pickups. She was about 75 to 80 grams. And she's been eating like a monster ever since. And so now she's picked up weight. And that's only been about three and a half weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. And now she's pushing close to 95 grams. So you know, it's definitely a payoff. So we know that as breeders that this won't be her forever home. Now, if we choose to keep her as just a pet and not breed her, then we'll put her in something like a two foot by one by one or like the aquarium that you saw. Or we might end up getting a four by two by two when she's an adult. So these are, those are the three options. So you got a least expensive option, a medium option, as well as an expensive option. Did I say that right? Small, medium, large, like mama bear, baby bear, papa bear type stuff. So, hey guys, this it. Um, again, I just wanted to bring you some content because I see a lot of people asking these questions um, to Lynn on Facebook or even Instagram. And so I just wanted to answer these questions because it's simple. We get these pets, these reptiles, because we love them. Now, we want to captive breed them because we don't know when the wild supply will ever stop. And instead of us seeing them in zoos, we can create hundreds or thousands of different pattern morphs so that we can trade these snakes and collect these snakes all around the world. So, hey guys, I think that's it. And I think this is well, this was named then the Wookiee. So the Wookiee will go back in her house and get fed later on. But hey, other than that, I thank you guys for tuning in and join us again next time. Thanks again, PMAC.